Welcome everyone, my name is Egwin from Scope of Life and Beyond Systems and today we are talking about one of the biggest currently existing misconceptions or misinterpretations when we are talking about fitness and to be more precise when we are talking about muscular training for the purpose of stabilizing the body or stabilizing joints. In this video I'm going to explain in detail how a trained muscle naturally protects and stabilizes our joints and where this misconception or misinterpretation I referred to before actually lies. And I can give you this much out front. It has to do with how actively you engage or think you have to engage in using your muscles as stabilizers throughout your regular day. Now, just a second before I hop over to the flip chart and explain all that with a little bit of drawing as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, but you want to stay up to date on natural movement and biomechanics, on training, natural training and how consciousness and body are actually interlinked and how you can use consciousness to improve your body, how all that comes together for overall better health and well-being, then use the subscribe button underneath the video and right now let's just jump right into this explanation. All right now first of all let's quickly talk about a muscle. A muscle obviously you have like the flesh part of the muscle with all the muscle fibers and then you have the tendons. The tendons are the connection part between the muscle and the bones and then again you have connective tissue. Connective tissue can be found within the muscle itself and there is also this fascial layer that surrounds a muscle and gives it its rough shape. Now when we're talking about a really weak muscle, a muscle that wasn't used for any considerable type of movement for a long period of time, that's called an atrophied muscle, which means that the muscle really gets very slim. Now, the power output a muscle can actually have depends on the diameter of the muscle. You see, when you train your muscle, whether with weights or with body weight training or whatever you actually do for training, you don't really increase muscle mass by adding additional muscle fibers but the muscle fibers that are there, they just get thicker. So that's how muscle mass is actually generated. It's not really that you get more cells in your muscles, but the cells in your muscle that are there, they grow. Now, when we take a look at what this actually means for a muscle, now the muscle length is also something that is defined by the number of cells that are in that muscle already if looked at the muscle in a resting position. Now let's just draw this one line up here and then let's draw another line down here. Now we have a tendon so the part that connects the muscle to the bone and we have another tendon down here. So those tendons at the moment they touch those lines and then we have a muscle that connects the two. And this muscle that I'm drawing here is really a very thin muscle, a very atrophied muscle. Now if that were the biceps of someone, obviously then uh, the tendons up here would be a little bit longer, but it's just about the principle. If that was the biceps of someone, this would really be a very, very weak and atrophied muscle. Now the fun thing is this, what happens when you train is that the diameter of the muscle increases. Now, what you have to keep in mind is that around the muscle, surrounding the muscle here, in green, and then those ligaments, you actually have this connective tissue layer. 
that sort of keeps the muscle in shape. Now what happens if we increase the diameter here? What happens is the following. We, have, we still have one tendon up here. Then we have a muscle that is a lot thicker. And because of that, what suddenly changes here as well is my lower line. So this means that basically this is the same muscle. We can still draw like this connective tissue layer around it. We can still draw this connective tissue layer around here. The only difference between those two muscles is not that this one is an engaged muscle and this one is a disengaged muscle. The difference is this is an untrained muscle, whereas this is a trained muscle. So this muscle has a little bit more muscle mass. Due to that, it's stronger. Now the thing is, if you have more diameter, but you have the same amount of actual muscle cells behind each other, then what happens is that the muscle is a little bit shorter, gets a little bit shorter naturally. This is why this distance here, let's call it A, and this distance here, let's call it B, why distance B is a little bit shorter than distance A. This is important to understand. Now let me translate that to an, to an actual joint. When we take a look at, say, the glenohomeral joint, which would be your shoulder joint up here, then you have your humerus. And you have your shoulder blade. Now this is looking at that from the front. And now let's talk about the biceps tendons. Now there are two biceps tendons. We have a short one, we have a long one. Now the biceps muscle would obviously be down here, like running down on your forearm, uh, on, your, on your upper arm, sorry. And then we have the tendons and the tendons, they actually, they run up here. Now one just above the glen glenoid up here and the other one attaches a little bit further back there. So that's actually two tendons, one here, one here. Now the joint capsule of the glenohomeral joint is not very tight and there are not a lot of ligaments that actually pull the humerus into the scapula. So the muscles that surround that joint are really important. Now the next part would be down here, so down there, which is my elbow joint, obviously. Now if this muscle is very weak, this also means that it doesn't really compress the joint a lot. See, every time you move, your joint also gets compressed a little bit because tension is created up here, tension is created down here, and that moves the two bony parts together before they actually start to move like a joint. So every time you move a joint in the body, pressure is increased in the joint, and then you actually have deflection, extension, elevation, abduction, adduction, or whatever. Now, if that muscle in this drawing down here is in such a state, in state of muscle A over here, then this means that there is not a lot of stabilization of this joint. If the muscle is in a trained state like this, like a little bit thicker and in a trained state like this up here in B, then this means that the joint is naturally held in place a bit better. I'm just gonna show you this principle in another way, just for a second, and then hop back on here. So what we have here, once again, 
We have green is the muscle and we have the carabinus which represent the tendons of that muscle and I have a marker here and a marker here. Now this would represent a completely atrophied muscle, so muscle that is very thin, thus also um, does not have a very uh, large diameter. Now look what happens as soon as I literally make this muscle wider. So the second we obviously we add some diameter here. What happens is we have one of the tendons still at the marker and the other one flipped away from the marker just a little bit over here. And that's the thing, like just for presentational purposes, obviously if I make that muscle even thicker, the distance between the tendons becomes even shorter. And that's that principle that I just showed you on the flip chart. All right, so what this means is actually that the second you train your muscles, and I'm not even talking about anything close to bodybuilding, just if you train your muscles to a normal, regular fitness, then they will be a little bit thicker than a completely atrophied muscle. Thus, it will give stabilization to your joints completely natural and that's the thing without you having to think about it and that's the big misconception that's out there in fitness at the moment you constantly hear you have to train your muscles in order to stabilize the joints and most people who do not know their way around biomechanics anatomy physiology and so on they hear that and they interpret that as something where they have to actually actively engage the muscle to stabilize the joint, which they supposedly can do as soon as the muscle is better trained. Now, obviously, a better trained muscle stabilizes the joint on its own already. In the shoulder, most people would never have the idea of actually tensing up the biceps or uh, the, the subscapularis, whatever, any, any one of those, of those muscles, or the supraspinatus or infraspinatus, or, um, no one would ever come to that idea to actually actively tense those muscles to stabilize the joint. But what about our spine? What about our core? This very same principle also applies to the spinal muscles. It also applies to the core muscles. So everyone out there who thinks that he or she needs to do abdominal training or training their, their, their spinal muscles in order to be able to actively hold their structure for a prolonged period of time actually runs on that misconception. Why? Because the huge muscles in the body that most people train with regular fitness training, those muscles do not have the cellular metabolism to actually be used permanently for prolonged periods of time. So everyone who goes out of a fitness class with this misconception in mind, they suddenly go, well, yeah, it, it, it's, still, it's still really difficult to have my abdominal muscles, my rectus abdominis and my, my obliques and stuff like that constantly engaged in order to protect and to stabilize my core or to have my lower back constantly engaged in order to protect my core. So they go to the fitness studio again and again and again, always running behind that goal of actually having to train their muscles to such an extent that they can stabilize, actively engage in stabilizing their core throughout the whole day without getting weak. And that's the big misconception. Yes, do your muscle training, but bear in mind that muscle training actually means 
to get your muscle to stabilize your body means to get your muscle out of an atrophied state into a normally trained state because that alone will already restructure your bony parts and will stabilize them naturally because it creates more cohesion in the joints because it just naturally, literally blows up, thus stabilizes the joints. So this is really important to understand here. Again, I don't have anything against training on the contrary, um, but it has to be done wisely. And in this specific case, it's really just something that people need to know because it changes your training. If you constantly try to, to do something actively with your muscles in order to uphold your structure, you will fail your whole life. And no, this, is, this misconception is not something that I made up. Actually, I meet people who have this misconception and misinterpretation and who are training in certified fitness studios all the time. I meet re regularly meet people uh, who tell me about those things, which is why I did this video. I hope this helps and I hope you got some new ideas of how the body actually works. Stay tuned. If you liked the video, make sure to like and share and also to subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful time. See you in the next video. Bye guys.